beautiful day, Explorer Steve is going to take us on a trip to Harbor Freight Tools and then have a talk about tool trolls or misguided fanatics. I keep a stack of my Harbor Freight coupons on my kitchen counter. But every year at around Christmas time, they come out with a 25% off coupon instead of their normal 20%. So this one expires on Sunday, 12 11 16, which is today. So I figured I better use it before it expires. Along with that, I peruse the list of free items that I could get with my purchase. I already have the flashlight, the tape measure, and the screwdriver sets. And I don't buy cheap batteries, so I'm going to opt for the terry cloth towels today. I'm going to use my Belomo triplet 10 times loop to read the fine print. It's made in Belarus and it's really good quality. A lot of times Harbor Freight will have exceptions in their coupon fine print, which is very small. And you don't want to embarrass yourself at the checkout line in front of the other tool buyers. I looked online for an item that I had had my eye on and it is this double end Pittsburgh professional swivel head dual ratchet. It's 1 4th inch on one end and 3 8 on the other and at a price of roughly $30 it's pretty expensive for Harbor Freight so I'm going to use my coupon for this. Up until a few years ago there was only one Harbor Freight in town and it was in an industrial area in a seedy part of Vegas. Now there are over five of them and I decided to go to the one closest to my house. It's in a nice strip mall and it's very modern and clean compared to that first one they had. If you're a longtime fan of Harbor Freight Tools you'll know that it seems kind of strange to see these popping up in nice areas of town where perhaps a Rite Aid or a drugstore used to be located instead of in the industrial area in a metal corrugated building. These sliding doors are a pretty nice touch if I do say so and the inside of these places are now bright and inviting. If anybody watching has been a long time viewer of my channel you'll know that it's usually RV related but since I'm a part-timer not a full-timer there are times when I don't have anything to film and in such times I do things like this or shop videos or how-to videos of how to fix things around your shop and in your RV. And a lot of people can relate to this because they have buying habits too. If you're a female maybe you can't pass the cosmetics row of Target without going in and picking up an item or if you're a fisherman you probably can't get out of Walmart without taking a trip down the fishing lure aisle even if to buy one item in the winter time so you can stow it away in your tackle box for next season. Anyhow I'm giving the store a once over before going to the tool aisle where that item is located and it looks like I've found it right here and it's a 14 inch like I said Pittsburgh double and 3 8 and 1 4 inch drive ratchet it has quick release buttons for both size sockets and it has a lever that you can actuate for forward and reverse so I figure I'd pick this up along with those microfiber cleaning cloths and make my way the long way of course out to the checkout line if you're a tool nut, you'll know that trips like this can bring a little joy to your life now and then, even if only spending a few dollars like I did today. The coupon makes the one item worth it. And what can I say, I just can't turn down a really good deal. So that's why I look at these on the way out, but they stuffed my bag full of those sales flyers before I left. Outside, I make my way back out to the truck. It's a beautiful day. I search my feelings for any remorse. I have none whatsoever. None! No buyer's remorse. Beautiful evening. The sunset started to take shape. 
on my way home. And that's the end of a great and productive trip to Harbor Freight Tools. Once I get a tool home, I like to take a look at it. Here I kind of pop off the packaging and have a closer look. In the hand, it feels really nice. It's got a good weight and heft to it, and it feels like a quality tool. It's nicely chromed, and the fit and finish on it is excellent. The ratchets on these are 72 tooth, so they're nice and fine. And if I were to add anything to it, it would be a locking mechanism for the tilt swivel. But being that it already has quick release button for the sockets as well as a swivel, and a mechanism to reverse the direction of the ratchet. And a nice finish, that might be asking a little bit too much for the price point of this tool. Here's a little close-up of the chrome and the engraving, which is top-notch in my opinion. Comparing it to a couple of other ratchets in my tool kit, you notice that from the top there's the Craftsman quarter inch, Second down is the 3 8 inch Craftman Drive, followed by a Pittsburgh Pro 14 inch swivel head 3 8 ratchet, followed by the new tool which has a slimmer profile than any of my ratchets, allowing it to fit into hard to get to spaces. The handle is as long as the 14 inch swivel head 3 8 inch, but it has the added benefit of having a quarter inch on the other side. If you buy any tools, buy American Snap-on. Anything else is just crap. I went on the internet just today and I looked up the price for 10 wrenches from Snap-on. They're called Flank Drive 12-point wrenches. You can buy these from Snap-on for $501 for 10 wrenches. Now to suggest that a man raising a new family would have to go and buy these wrenches to put together a crib from Ikea is ridiculous. Everything you buy from Harbor Freight is just cheap Chinese junk. I can't say that I agree with that because a lot of the things that I bought from Harbor Freight are really good and I'll admit that I bought some things that are no good at all. And what I find to be a great tool when trying to select something that you're going to spend money on at Harbor Freight is to look on the website and look at their star rating system. On this particular wrench it had four and a half stars and to me, from 60-some reviewers, that means it's probably going to be good. And if it's not good, I can always return it. If you buy from Harbor Freight, you're supporting child slave labor. Now, I've heard that. A commenter or two have said that these tools were made by child slave labor in China. And I personally like to buy responsibly, so I did a lot of research trying to find where it said that. And not being able to find that, I asked the commenter to provide me with the proof that they had that this was indeed true. I have not since heard back from them. Listen, son, if you buy any tools, you should buy American, like Home Depot, Craftsman, Lowe's, or Napa. I challenge anybody who thinks that those tools are made in America to go into those stores and look at the labels. You'll find that all of those tool makers are made in China. It's the dang people like you that's wrong with America. You're putting Americans out of work. Sorry to inform you about this, but Harbor Freight is an American company based out of Calabasas, California. It has 700 locations in 47 states and employs 17,000 people. Their annual revenue is $2 billion. So this is an American company employing Americans everywhere from the stores through management to those union workers on the docks. So please research some of what you say to be true before you post it in a comment section. Now those previous comments, I don't consider any of those to be tool trolls because I think they're bringing up some valid points or maybe they have some preconceived ideas in their head that they haven't really quite looked into yet or maybe they haven't shopped at Harbor Freight in many years. I'll be the first to admit that in the 1970s I bought a wrench set that looked like they were cut out by hand using a hacksaw. Those of you who have shopped at Harbor Freight way back when, you'll know what I'm talking about. Go back to Japan 
chink. The only people that I personally consider trolls on my channel, and I get very few of them, and when I do get them, it's usually on these tool reviews or tool purchases. And those are the people who resort to name calling or threats. So I've been called every name in the book, usually having to do with my race, and usually they're wrong on that point. The other one is death threats, threatening me or wanting my daughter to die because I buy tools from Harbor Freight. To tell you the truth, I don't take these people seriously and they're quickly deleted and I move on with my life because I'm a mature man. Well, that's the video. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you'll know that it's usually RV related and I have times like this when there's a lull in my video production. I try to shoot for one a week, but it's getting close to Christmas and I have to put Christmas together as well as prepare for my son to come home from college and all the other things, so video production may lack here and there. I don't apologize for these type of things because I'm not monetized and I have nothing to gain from this except for my personal satisfaction. The best thing that you can do is just stay subscribed, that way you'll get updates on future videos. Thanks and have a great day. I'm not really a jerk. I just play one on YouTube.